Hello. <laughs> Welcome to Rehab Counseling Programs, Making the Decision to Click Submit. I'm Dr. Andrea Nerlish. And I'm Dr. Jamie Midas. And welcome to everyone who is joining us today. Um, this is going to be a fairly informal presentation. We want to give you an overview of the profession as well as about our program, um, but also talk about some of the common concerns that people have about applying to graduate school and kind of how we can put your mind at ease about some of those things. So just to tell you a little bit about the field of rehabilitation counseling. Um, what you see here is part of our scope of practice statement that the Commission on Rehabilitation Counseling um, articulates. But rehab counseling, by and large, works with people um, with vast disabilities. I think that sometimes people say, oh, do you work with this disability or this disability? The answer is always yes. Okay, we work with a broad array of individuals with physical, mental, developmental, cognitive, and emotional disabilities. So that is gonna include mental health conditions as well as substance use. And the crux of what we do is to focus on personal career and independent living goals to help people integrate into society um, all the places that they live, lear, uh, live, learn, and work, okay? And our process involves communication, goal setting, and working toward beneficial growth through self-advocacy, psychosocial, psychological, vocational, social, and behavioral interventions. So, when we look at rehab counseling and other specialties of counseling, we do utilize the same theories and skills, but we tend to apply it to a broader context across very diverse consumers in a wide variety of settings. So we see people in schools, in workplaces, in clinics, hospitals, and you'll see that a little bit more toward the end of the presentation when we look at where some of our graduates have been placed recently. As far as candidates for what we're looking for in rehabilitation counseling or the field of rehab counseling, our candidates tend to be very naturally innovative, inquisitive, a person who seeks challenge, and someone who wants to be an advocate. Okay, We would like a person who sees themselves as confident, as creative, open-minded, and empathic. Okay, We are going to be, through the program, providing you with the knowledge and skills to be a counselor. But kind of this is um, somewhat of the innate kind of uh, skill set that a person is going to bring in and some of the personality attributes that a lot of the candidates who seek rehab counseling have. And this really does feed into what we see as our values. Okay, We subscribe to what's called a sociopolitical model where the disability, yes, we recognize that a person does have a medical condition or a mental health condition or a substance use disorder, but that there are some forces within society that also pose barriers to the person. Uh, many of these barriers are physical, but a lot of them exist in the form of discrimination or attitudes against people with disabilities. So as you can see, the values that undergird our profession, human rights and dignity, really working to empower the folks that we work with. Um, and really, we focus on how do we help the people we work with to develop self-advocacy and self-determination so that they can go out beyond working with us and implement the skills and knowledge that we have provided to them in counseling. Diversity, um, yes, we understand that there's cultural diversity, but we look at diversity across all human experience in terms of um, gender and sexual orientation, in terms of all disability. Um, so it's a wide variety of individuals that we're working with. And we emphasize strengths. I know with disability and other types of conditions, it's easy to focus on what a person can't do, but we really try to focus on the values and strengths that a person has and try to parlay those into goals that they can achieve. Um, always working to ensure quality of life, that's gonna be something that a person self-defines. Um, what they can do, what they want to do, and kind of how their own values are going to play into what they want for themselves. And we do this through a holistic approach to make sure that we are focusing on equity, social justice, and self-sufficiency. So hopefully what I've just said speaks to you in terms of why you would want to be interested in the field of rehab counseling. And Dr. Midas is going to talk a little bit about um, the four types of degree programs that we have. 
Okay, so um, starting off with our master's programs, we have specifically two master's programs that are available to interested candidates. The first is our MSED in Rehabilitation Counseling. And as you can see from the slide, that program consists of 51 credit hours that you would complete. Um, and within that experience, not only are you taking coursework around subjects such as foundations to rehabilitation counseling, uh, job placement, counseling theory, technique, multicultural issues, but you also would be doing a practicum experience followed by a two semester internship experience. And what's great about those experiences is that it allows for you to really tie together a lot of the fundamental learning that you're taking in your other courses and applying it into your practical experiences with good supervision that helps you to further develop your skill set as well as your knowledge. Um, this degree does prepare you to become eligible for the National CRC exam. This is a certification for rehabilitation counseling, and it's recognized throughout the country. And so, in other words, you can live here in the New York with that certification, or you could move to another state and it would carry through. Um, this is a good credential to have because it does um, elevate you in terms of the kind of jobs that you would be eligible for in the field. And it also accentuates your potential for earnings, um, which can be important, especially later on, not only for your entry level job, but um, for promotion, which we'll talk about in a little bit. So this degree generally takes about two years to complete with uh, a potential course over the summer as well, one or two courses in the summer. And it again will prepare you to work in a wide array of settings as Andrea had said, um, you know, again, nonprofit agencies as well as public sector and even the nonprofit sectors. Also, we have our Master's in Rehabilitation Counseling and Mental Health. So in this degree, which is 60 credits, so it does generally require one additional semester to complete. It prepares you to become uh, certified again as a rehabilitation counselor. But in addition to that, you become eligible for licensing as a mental health counselor in the state of New York. So it doesn't give you that credential when you graduate. It just, it makes you eligible. So there are some requirements you do post-graduation in, in order to qualify as an LMHC. I should say with regard to the certification, an advantage with that is you can actually take the certification exam in your final semester of your program in the master's program. Um, and many of our students actually are certified by the time they graduate, which is a nice uh, marketing tool when they're interviewing for jobs. For the licensing as a mental health counselor, once you graduate, there is an exam that you would need to take, um, and you also must complete 3,000 post-clinical hours uh, to achieve your LMHC. So this degree, again, is preparing you, the combined degree is compare, um, com preparing you to become certified as a rehabilitation counselor in combination with becoming a licensed mental health counselor in the state of New York. In this, pro, in this particular degree, um, in addition to all the rehabilitation counseling courses you take, there are some additional mental health counseling courses you would take as well. And for your practicum and internship experiences, we would ensure that you're situated in a setting that would provide both rehabilitation counseling and mental health counseling. So this way you're satisfying the requirements for both of those, uh, both of those fields. And you should know that our program um, historically has been accredited by CORE and moving forward now, we are accredited by KCRUP um, and that has been ongoing since last year, but in the fall of 2017, both our MSED in Rehab Counseling and our MSED in Rehab Counseling and Mental Health will be accredited by KCREP, which is seen as the um, overarching accrediting body for counseling programs and is consider, considered to be reputable um, and also beneficial when you're marketing yourself in the field for jobs. Um, 
In terms of both programs, there is the core RIA curriculum, as I was saying before, and I did mention about both having a practicum experience and internship. Just to make one additional clarifying point on that, with practicum, it generally involves a completion of 100 hours in the field at a site that we will work with you to uh, situate. And a class accompanies that where you continue to work on advanced counseling skills, ethics, uh, case report writing, and things of that nature. Internship, as I said before, is a longer experience, two semesters at 300 hours per semester. So in total, that would be 600 hours. Again, we'll work with you. We have a field coordinator who assists our students in finding their internship sites. And in that experience, um, you would have a seminar, which is a little different from the cl a class situation where in this situation, you would be presenting case studies and such. And then lastly, um, sort of at the pinnacle of the program towards graduation is a comprehensive portfolio exam. And this essentially consists of a case study. You get your own specialized case that you will be working throughout your final semester, um, writing up uh, a portfolio that generally falls anywhere between 40 to 60 pages. And we provide to you some of the standard, the KCREP standards, and your goal essentially is to address the, the case study in terms of psychosocial issues, vocational issues, medical, physical issues that may be going on with the client around the disability, as well as mental health, substance abuse, and so on. And ultimately, you develop a treatment plan along with a, what we call an individualized plan of employment for this case study. And you submit that uh, to the faculty who review for consideration of passing or potentially rewrites um, and such. So that's the makeup of the two master's programs. Um, if you do have questions, please feel free to post those. Otherwise, we'll move on to the advanced certificates. With regard to the advanced certificates, there's two primary uh, advanced certificates that we have. And as you can see from the slide, they actually complement our master's program programs. So the first one is geared towards rehabilitation counseling specifically. And the second advanced certificate is geared towards rehab counseling and mental health. So what does this mean? When we look at the advanced certificate for rehabilitation counseling, this is going to be for the person who who already has a master's degree in some related field um, in out there. So it can be mental health counseling. It might be even school counseling. Um, and as you can see from the slide, we actually have category R listed as one of the eligibility criteria for the CRC certification exam. What that means is that um, CRC essentially has different categories under which you can apply to take the exam. So the one that's posted on the screen here, category R, the individual would have to have earned a degree, a master's degree in some of the areas that are listed there such as disability studies, occupational therapy, psychology, and so on. And then you would have to complete a minimum of 21 credits um, through our advisement in the program. We would develop a plan of study with you to fill in any gaps needed to make you eligible under category R to take the exam. You should also know there is a category, I believe it's category D, and this is for counselors other than rehabilitation counseling. So that, again, would be mental health counselors, school counselors. Um, in this case, it would be a similar situation where we would sit down with you and provide advisement and develop a plan of study with you to fill in the gaps. But when you apply for, to take the CRC exam, you would be applying under category D as compared to category R. So again, we would work with you individually to make sure the plan is sound and uh, it will get you to where you need to take that exam. Uh, this degree, again, is going to help you become certified. As you can see in the second advanced certificate, this degree is geared more towards rehab practitioners or other related practitioners who are interested in 
becoming licensed as a mental health counselor in the state of New York. So if, for example, there's a rehabilitation counselor out there who has earned the CRC, for example, um, now is interested in coming back and adding on the mental health component, we would sit down with you and develop a plan of study, again, with a minimum of 21 credits, and essentially fill in the gaps. Um, so this way, you could be eligible to complete your 3,000 hours post-certificate, as well as take the exam. So again, we work very much individually with each student to ascertain that they are satisfying all the course requirements, the field work components that are needed to be eligible for either the CRC or the LMHC. So with that being said, we'll move on to the next slide. So we understand that people who are considering either coming to the master's program or the advanced certificate program might have some reservations. So we wanted to address a couple of these things. So really looking at that decision to apply and what might be a barrier or hesitation that you have. First thing that students sometimes say to us is that you're not, they're not sure if they'll be able to balance graduate school because they have a pretty full plate. So individuals who come to our program really, um, kind of live many, many roles like worker, spouse and partner, a parent, a volunteer, a friend. Sometimes you might even find time to throw in your social life. And now you're looking to add student to this mix. Well, you know, we see a lot of students are in this situation. We're kind of in this situation ourselves. You know, we all fulfill a lot of roles. And the picture that you actually see on the screen is a, is a former graduate of ours who, while in the program, got married um, and she became pregnant while still in the program, graduated with her master's, sat for her CRC and passed it and then uh, gave birth to her daughter. So you can see on her cap, it says Mrs. MSED CRC mom. And that's what the order she did it in, knowing what her priorities are and kind of how she wanted to balance those goals in her life. So to do that, we really do have flexible plans of study. Um, you can be full-time or part-time. But knowing that lots and lots and lots, probably the majority of folks who are in our program do work in the field currently. So with that in mind, we have evening classes to accommodate that. Our classes tend to typically be Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday nights, either from 4.30 to 6.20 or 6.30 to 8.20. Occasionally, there might be a Monday class in your schedule. Um, like Jamie mentioned, we do have placement assistance for field work. I think that's the one hesitation people have that will just kind of say, well, you have to do your internship and practicum, go ahead, find a place. We have um, a field work coordinator who works exclusively with um, the counseling programs and has many contracts and relationships in the field to set that up. And she'll even set that up for you um, a semester in advance of when you're gonna be starting so that you can kind of be put at ease. And that's really gonna be based on your desires and what your goals are for where you eventually see yourself working. Um, myself and Jamie um, and other faculty within our department really do have an open door policy. You know, yes, we, you know, it'd be great if you could always make an appointment and, and get on our schedule. But, you know, if we're in there and you need to talk, that's that's really when um, you can come and, and make sure that you're being proactive. If you see that there's going to be a barrier to completing a class or something, something at work came up, you know, we really want you to be honest. Again, we want you to be committed to the program. We want the program to be a priority, but we do understand life gets in the way. We do understand that sometimes there are some challenges and we want, you know, individuals to be open and honest with that, um, as well as regular advisement. When you apply to the program and are accepted, we will set out and do a you know, what has Jamie, what Jamie has mentioned is a plan of study saying, here's what the next two or three years of your life are going to look like. But it's hard to, again, really, um, you know, foresee all the things that might come up in that time. So we meet each semester to make sure you're on plan and nothing's changed. Um, any new student that enters into our program, we assign a more senior student to that person just to kind of get the lay of the land, get the student perspective. Um, there are even now, um, people will ask me things and I say, you know what, you really want to ask a student that because they're going to know the ins and outs of it a lot better than I will. Um, really how to navigate different services on campus and, and who to go to to really get the best information. Because what we really value is work-life balance. We hope that, you know, what you're doing here is really going to um, enrich what you're doing in other parts of your life. And uh, this is Dr. Midas speaking. Just to add to that slide prior with the graduate 
uh, with the aloha on her cap. <laughs> Uh, in terms of work-life balance, uh, not only was she pregnant, but she um, she married a gentleman that's in the military who got stationed in Hawaii during her final, I think her final year in the program. And so, of course, for her, it was important she, to decide whether she was going to stay, finish up things, or if she was going to go to Hawaii, um, not finish things or if there might be another option. And we did come up with the other option for her, which was essentially to um, do her internship in Hawaii. We would provide the supervision via distance. And this way she would be able to finish out her, um, and she also had one of their core class to take. So we were able to accommodate that in terms of distant learning. Um, and so she was able to go and be in Hawaii with her husband while at the same time completing her internship and at the same time finishing the course requirements. So I guess what I'm trying to say is that as in our program, we really do value the work value or the work life balance and um, we try to work with students in a way that will keep our quality of the program, but at the same time um, accommodate their needs. So in terms of the second um, issue that could potentially stop students from or candidates from entering the program, certainly money is always an important factor to be weighed in on that decision. And there's a couple different levels of it. Um, of course, one of those levels has to do with how am I going to pay for this? Um, and the other piece is what am I going to make when I'm done with all of this? Um, so for right now, let's talk about how I'm not sure if I can afford graduate school. Um, well, there are a few different options available to help you with this. Aside from any other private options you may have um, specific to your own situation. One of the um, benefits about rehab counseling is that we are fortunate enough to apply for federal grants that are through the Rehab Service Administration, which is part of the U.S. Department of Education. And with these grants, which are five years generally, we are to apply 75% of the grant to tuition for students. So what that essentially means is that each semester um, when we have these grants, we, we, we request applications from the students and then we make allocations to students to help them in paying for their tuition. Right now, we currently have two federal grants um, that are good for another two and a half years. And with that, we try to support students that apply for it up to about 30%, sometimes 30% uh, of tuition, I should say, for that given semester. Sometimes we can go higher than that, depending upon how many students are applying and what funds are available for that given semester. Um, but we certainly reach out to students. We encourage them to apply uh, each semester. Not every semester will a student necessarily receive funding, but we try to do our best to distribute the funds across as many students as we can during their time in the program. With the federal grants uh, through RSA, there are some requirements, which certainly if you are you are specifically interested, we can go into much greater detail uh, personally with you. But one of the major requirements is that when you graduate, um, for each semester of funding you would have get been given, you'll give back one year of time working either in a not-for-profit setting in rehab or the public sector of rehab. So if you got, let's say, one year of funding, you would be obligated to give back two years of time, full-time employment, working again in either a not-for-profit or the public sector. So that's very specific and unique to our program, and you wouldn't necessarily find that in other professions. Um, the other sources of funding we have, of course, you have standard financial aid. Um, you have to be taking four and a half credits in order to be eligible to apply for financial aid. Certainly many of our students do that. Um, but we also have some departmental scholarship funding and campus-wide assistantships. As far as the departmental scholarship funding, um, what happens is that through our provost office each year, they allocate a certain amount of funds to each graduate program, and rehab counseling is one of those. 
So those funds are used uh, to support students in terms of tuition as well. Oftentimes, we'll try to give those monies to students who did not get the Rehab Service Administration grant funding. But there are times where, depending on how many apply, a student who is getting the RSA funding might also by chance get provost funding as well. Um, in addition, there's a scholarship that comes out for provost uh, funding each spring too that one student is eligible to receive, which is a few thousand dollars. We do have campus-wide uh, assistantships. For example, we have graduate assistantships. So uh, within our department, for example, um, there are students working roughly five hours a week. Uh, for a particular faculty member. So if that's something you would be interested, we could talk more. And then lastly is the College Cost Reduction Act. Um, and this is for anyone taking out financial aid. What you want to be aware of is that the College Cost Reduction Act essentially will forgive your loan after you've given 10 years of work time paying back your monthly student loan. So this is certainly something you want to look into um, should you pursue financial aid. Another concern that students have of, is just being able to handle the rigor of graduate level courses. Yes, we understand that graduate level courses are more intensive than undergraduate courses, but understanding that all the courses that you're going to be taking in graduate school are going to be directly relevant to the career that you want to pursue. So you won't find yourself having to struggle through that history class that doesn't lack a lot of relevance to you or the math class that you don't exactly enjoy. All of our classes are going to be small classes, and we pride ourselves on a collaborative rather than competitive learning environment. Students team up for projects, form study groups. A lot of the activities that we do in our classes are team-based, um, really trying to mirror the milieu of the field, really interdisciplinary teams and team-based approaches to um, working with clients. So we try to kind of set up that same dynamic within the program. As far as campus, um, there are a number of resources for students. If you are a student with a documented disability, you can utilize student access services for a wide array of accommodations. There is a writing center and you can go to the library to receive services in terms of how to research and how to utilize the online um, library services, and then student computing services will help out with any type of technical difficulties that a person is having. We utilize an online um, course management system called Blackboard at Hofstra, so a number of the courses are kind of uh, mediated and moderated through that, so um, we can provide assistance with that. But if you really do, if you really are concerned about this, we can actually um, put you in touch with one, with one of our current students to try to give you that firsthand perspective of how students experience our program. Okay, and lastly, another concern that may um, hinder whether or not someone chooses to come to the program is what I don't want to go to graduate school and not have a job afterwards. I can tell you with great confidence, this is really not a concern um, because we actually have excellent placement rates, um, as you can see. We have roughly 75% of our students that are employed prior to graduation and within six months after, um, it's even higher at 90%. Uh, some of the students that might not be placed thinking specifics um, are people who maybe had started a family and decided to delay. Um, some of our students have had family personal uh, issues that sort of delayed their getting started, but we have excellent placement rates. We work very closely with our students, uh, as well as being very connected in the field to agencies and employers. It's not uncommon each week that we'll be contacted about specific openings at an agency, um, that they reach out to us first before they actually advertise it because they really um, respect the caliber of the students in our program. So it's very much a networking process and you're not sort of just thrown out to the wolves to figure it out for yourself. Um, this is again, if you wanted to talk to a current student or an alumni, they would be able to uh, validate much of what we're saying here. Um, again, marketable edge, 
It's uh, your credentialed upon graduation, which is really important. Um, that's one of the issues with the LMHC because you're delayed in getting your LMHC for you have to get those 3,000 hours completed, but you can come out with your CRC and that's a, a certainly an advantage to becoming employed um, that employers would look to favorably. And just recently, there was a study that came out by the American Counseling Association um, that showed rehabilitation counselors across the country are making a higher salary than other counseling disciplines, such as mental health counseling and school counseling. So uh, again, uh, salaries are fairly good for given the field as a whole. And you should know too, there's certainly promotion opportunities. We have um, oftentimes seen many of our graduates who have elevated fairly early in their careers, which certainly brings along better income as well. Uh, but again, I certainly encourage you to speak with our alumni if you should be interested. And just something to add to that, you know, if you're on listening to this, you may be considering mental health counseling and really what is the difference between the rehab with mental health counseling. Um, there are a number of mental health counseling programs on Long Island and in the area. And the combined program with both the rehab counseling and mental health counseling really does give that competitive edge that you know, everyone is going to be trained in the same way and everyone is going to be pursuing that postgraduate um, licensure, but you are going to be coming out with a different and, and broader um, knowledge base because many times individuals who come in to receive mental health services also have another type of disability or health impairment and you're going to be better prepared to deal with those issues as well. So kind of having a, a broader base um, of knowledge and skills there. And I'll, I'll just add further to that, too. In fact, we're seeing where there are some agencies who maybe historically only took, say, like an LMHC. Now they're asking to have someone who has the LMHC and the CRC because they're seeing the ben benefit of the person who has both of those uh, together. And with um, mental health services moving toward the positive recovery oriented services and vocation being a goal, um, rehab counselors are much better poised to handle those roles and functions. So lastly, are you ready to make your decision? Um, if you're interested in the master's program, um, in addition to the application, you would need transcripts from all your previous institutions um, with an acceptable grade point average. We'd like to see um, that to be around a 3.0. Um, and you would have to have at least two of four prerequisite classes. If you don't have those, you can you can complete those within your first year in the program. Those being, and again, only two of these, um, developmental psychology, abnormal psychology, personality psychology, or statistics. And you would have to have a B or better in those courses. A personal statement written about your career goals for rehab counseling and, and rehab mental health. A resume, um, especially highlighting any experience you have with persons with disability and four professional references. We'd like at least one of those to be academic. The others can be um, professional references. For the advanced certificate program, you would have to have proof of your master's degree in the related field with a minimum, minimum GPA of 3.0, which is uh, pretty much a standard for most counseling programs. Um, so we'd need a transcript from that. The detailed personal resume, as well as three professional references with at least one um, being academic. Once I review the application, a personal interview is going to be required after the application process. We do have a little bit of a working part of our interview process, so it's not just question and answer. Um, so we would have that scheduled shortly after we receive your application materials. So if you would like to meet me in person, um, I will be available at our next graduate open house, which is coming up in two Saturdays on June 3rd, and that's at 1130 in our Mac Student Center. You can click on the link there to RSV, RSVP to the event. If we've already convinced you that this is exactly what you want to be doing, you can actually click on the link below um, for Grad Apply to apply today to begin your application. If you do, in fact, want to speak more um, to either myself or um, on the next slide, you'll see Dr. Midas's contact information, or if you would like to speak to a alumni of our program or a current student, we would be happy to put you in touch with one of them so that they will hopefully validate everything that we've been, we've been saying today. So with that, if you have any questions, um, we'd like to, you know, thank you for listening to our presentation. Hopefully it gave you a different picture um, than at least a more comprehensive picture than what you might just read on our website. 
Um, so if you have any questions, you can please add them into the, um, the chat session. Well, you can see here that we have our um, contact information for both myself and Dr. Midas. So um, I know that you're probably all on your lunch break, and I don't want to keep you from that. So if you would like further information, please email or call one of us.